And I would go for another 12 hours to try to break Strom Thurmond's record, but I've discovered that there are some limits to filibustering, and I'm going to have to go take care of one of those in a few minutes here. <laughs> That was Senator Rand Paul wrapping up his historic 13-hour filibuster this week. What he was trying to do was to, uh, he was demanding of the administration that the president assure him that military drones in the United States are not going to be shooting Americans at cafes. Uh, Matt Kaminsky of the editorial board, uh, the administration uh, responded, I, I gather is going to respond again, uh, essentially saying we don't intend to, but if it's a combatant, we do have the right. Uh, did the administration <laughs> give the right answer here? Well, yes. I mean, legally speaking, I think politically is, is a, speaking is a different issue. But legally, in terms of laws of war, um, Attorney General Eric Holder earlier this week sent uh, Senator Paul a letter saying that uh, we've, drones have never been used over U.S. territory. They have no intention of using drones over U.S. territory. But hypothetically speaking, um, if um, there are enemy, enemy combatants, who have declared war on the U.S., on U.S. territory, the president does have the authority to order lethal force, whether by drone or an Abrams tank or, or, an, or, a, or an M-16, against them. Um, now, And in fact, we have uh, killed a U.S. citizen uh, overseas, in this case, not in the United States, but Anwar al-Awlaki, who was making war on the United States. Right, exactly. That's sort of your, your passport um, is immaterial to whether you are an enemy of this country. In World War II, there were Americans who joined the Nazis. A couple of them actually snuck back on U.S. soil to try and perform some acts of sabotage. They were caught, they were tried by military court in secret, and they were executed, and the Supreme Court upheld it later on. The same thing applies here. I mean, um, the, the one thing which was unclear last night that, you know, Senator Paul was saying, well, you know, an innocent American could be targeted by a drone. No, the president has no right to target innocent Americans for extermination. Uh, believe it or not. Um, and apparently <laughs> Eric Holder it. has sent him a letter today uh, clarifying that point. Okay, I think that gets to the, the heart of this issue, which is we're talking about drones. That's uh, kind of the political fascination. But as you point out, it could be any weapon. I think the, the question here that a lot of Americans would have is uh, how much power does the president have uh, without a court to say this American citizen is affiliated with Al Qaeda. I mean, is there a danger that that could be that could be uh, abused? Uh, not that uh, you want uh, all Al Qaeda guys uh, on their on their way to detonate right. a bomb to get all kinds of Miranda rights, but is there a concern there? Look, it's always a concern about the abuse of power by our government, and Americans should always be vigilant. Why we have a press, why we have Congress, why we have elections? That's right. a legitimate concern. In this particular case, and let's just go through this very calmly, you know, the reason why we have drone program uh, in the first place, which is targeting, just to be clear, it is used in the remote areas of Pakistan and Yemen against terrorist hideouts where we cannot send soldiers uh, to, uh, to detain these guys or fight them in any other way. But the reason why this is happening is because after 9-11, Congress passed a resolution that authorized the president uh, that, that basically declared a state of war as the president, as the executive under the Constitution, can do what it is necessary to defend the U.S. Okay. And that has applied all the way through. The different okay. question here is, you know, has, is the president being clear enough about this? Should he be asking for new authorization? That's, that's legitimate. But I think that was lost. I mean, these serious points were lost in the theatrics of, oh, oh, of yesterday. Okay, one more about, and uh, we got to go quickly here, but in terms of uh, the presidential message and, and what seems a contradiction when uh, we have the drone program here and basically asserting uh, the president's right to uh, defend the country, to attack combatants. Uh, then we see uh, Thursday the news that uh, Osama bin Laden's son-in-law is now in New York in the custody of the FBI, which seems to be treating it as a law enforcement matter, even though he has appeared in al-Qaeda videos after 9-11 saying, we're going to get you. Uh, United right. States. It, that seems like someone who would fit in the combatant category. What is he doing in what appears to be a civilian 
justice process. Well, if President Obama was still in the Senate, and if George Bush was, was still in office, he would be on the floor there joining whoever was filibustering the Bush area, that is counterterrorism <laughs> policy. And this is certain. actually an indictment of the Republicans who joined the filibuster. It is pure politics, and that's all it is. I mean, the problem President Obama that as a senator, as a candidate, he promised, I want this to be a law enforcement issue. He became president, it got a bit more complicated. So he did, he did close some of these black sites. He promised to close Guantanamo, but he has used his executive authority to defend the U.S. against terrorist attacks because he knows if the attacks succeed, it'll be on him. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.